and welcome to Career Center. I'm Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center, a resource center located in Naperville for people in career transition. Career Center will bring human resource professionals and other experts together to provide job search tips to assist you as you search for your next success. Later on Career Center, President and owner of Transworld Business Advisors, Steve Eschbach, will join me at the table to discuss his insights on entrepreneurship and franchising. But first, I'm happy to have client consultant Chuck Purcelli on the show. Chuck, welcome. Thank you for having me, Kim. I appreciate it. So Chuck, tell me a little bit about what it is that you do. I know you're part of two staffing firms. Yes, uh, we own two staffing firms. One does mostly temporary labor. The other does more professional, skilled, sort of niche positions. Okay. Uh, so what I do is I work with the clients, sort of get an idea of what they're looking for, how they're going to move their organization forward through hiring new people. Um, then I meet with recruiters and then plenty of candidates to figure out who fits the mold for our clients. Okay. And so when people come to you, they, they come, uh, whether it's for one agency or the other, and then you kind of decide which one makes the best sense for them and how to move forward. Absolutely. Depending on what the job seeker is looking mm -hmm. for and um, what they may be qualified or trained for, uh, we usually have a client that meets their criteria. So which one is for the ones that are t more temporary? Which um, agency? That's that? ASG staffing. ASG. Mm -hmm. and that's, then, okay. That's a lot of uh, manual labor in manufacturing environments or warehousing environments. And Azimuth, the second company, does the more clerical positions, customer okay. service representatives, administrative assistants, um, all the way up to graphic designers, people in accounting, we're all over the place. Yeah, and then you're all over the Chicagoland for both, or? Absolutely, yeah. we have offices in Aurora, Bensonville, Glendale Heights, Berwyn, in the city. Mm -hmm. um, we have a pretty wide spread. Okay, so let's talk about the difference as it relates to like staffing agencies and, and um, mm. the positions that you find between a contract position and a permanent position. Absolutely, uh, so we specialize in doing both of those, and okay. it depends on what the potential employee is looking for. Some people need flexibility because they need to take their kids to school or daycare or take care of their parents. Mm -hmm. um, so they like to work a different amount of hours. They might not want to work 40 hours per week, but they need some flexibility in their lives. So they do a lot of customer service positions, things that don't require them to be in an office, maybe 40 hours a week at strict time deadlines. Okay. Um, and then the permanent placement direct hire are people looking for 40 hours a week to join a company um, on their own, and the company hires them on their own. Okay, mm -hmm. but you can you you'll put the clients in front of these companies. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And so the contract positions, those could change out each week with different companies, or they could be. Yes, yeah. some companies have up to a hundred contract employees of ours working at any given time uh -huh. at their facilities. Okay. Um, so those contract employees are actually our employees, and um, the company is using our services with mm -hmm. them. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, how does a job seeker go about finding a new a job while they're currently employed? Um, gotcha. Because you have some folks that'll come to you, they're frustrated and they want to... Absolutely, we see that a lot on the direct hire side. Mm -hmm. They say, I don't want to go on LinkedIn, I don't want to post it, my boss gonna is going to see it. Yeah. Right, because they don't want to lose their current job because mm -hmm. that's their livelihood, mm -hmm. and we totally understand that. Um, there are so many different things that they can do um, because with the age of technology we're living in right mm -hmm. now, you can look up companies the same way you look up your favorite pizza restaurant or mm -hmm. Chinese delivery place. Mm -hmm. You can go, there's resources like Glassdoor, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, Indeed.com that act as review sites yeah. where previous employees or current employees write a little bit about their experience and who they work with and what their team environment looks like. Um, so I'd say the first place to start when you're looking for a job is just type in a few companies you might know of, type in a job title you might um, think you want to work in, um, and just start reading reviews, reading mm -hmm. about the companies. Um, once you go through that, it's a lot easier than most people think to reach out to those companies directly. So instead of posting your resume online where oh. it just gets lost in millions of other resumes, people that are looking for the same position you mm -hmm. are, it's very competitive out there. Right, absolutely. It's super simple to go on LinkedIn, type in the company name, look up somebody by department, say, hey, this guy's the customer service manager. Why don't I write a letter to him? So now your cover letter turns into something you write and you mail into him saying, hey, I saw you have this position open. Here's what I'm good at. Let me know when you can talk. Mm -hmm. Staple that to your resume, mail it right to the company. 
you might get some phone calls back. Interesting. So, you know, oftentimes we hear people say, or, or um, hiring managers say, you know, follow the, the rules. If it says, you know, fax in your resume or mm -hmm. go through the applicant tracking, you know, portal, you yes. do that. But you say sometimes it's okay to kind of navigate it a different way. Absolutely, and I strongly <laughs> encourage navigating a different way. Definitely play by the rules, submit your resume, fill out the do application the online, mm -hmm. but then you can do that extra work. And that extra credit may or may not, but typically does, set you apart from the other applicants. Because mm -hmm. they might get 800 applicants for one job and they only need to find one person. Mm -hmm. You want to be that person that stands out. Yeah, and so um, what about networking in that regard then? So you'll do a little... Absolutely. In terms of like your digital networking, it sounds like that's yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, digital networking, connecting with people you know, mm -hmm. whether it's through LinkedIn, even Facebook. I mm -hmm. see people posting open opportunities on Facebook all the time. Yeah. Um, after you tap into your digital network, if you have the liberty to let people know you're looking for a job, whether you're, you're employed or not currently, I say tell your friends, mm -hmm. tell your neighbors, whoever you're grabbing lunch with or dinner with. Let people know that you're on the prowl, that you're mm -hmm. looking for something because you never know who knows somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Steve, your neighbor, might be best friends with Andrea, the, uh, the mm -hmm. manager at their company, and they need to hire someone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, he could put in a good word for you. Yeah, and it's really, I know we, we have talked about this before on the show, but it's so important to feel comfortable with networking. I mean, it's just the Absolutely. key. It's what's going to help you get that next It can job. be such an awkward, hey, I'm trying to get something from you. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to use you or something like that. A lot of people can view it that way. Mm -hmm. And I did myself coming out of school trying to find a job. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a second, I'm just going around asking people for jobs. Yeah. Why would they give it to me? Yeah. I don't deserve it. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but really, it's just about demonstrating your value mm -hmm. because human nature, I believe, people want to help other people out. Absolutely. And if you allow yourself to be helped, you know, you'll yeah. be able to pass. And that that's on. just how you're gonna, you know, land your next job. What are some other options that you, in terms of navigating that job search through? Absolutely. Um, a lot of companies work exclusively with recruiting firms mm -hmm. and staffing agencies. Mm -hmm. um, for example, with our company, we work with some uh, clients that. They need these positions filled a certain way, and we've done it for them in the past. They don't even bother posting it online or trying to hire on their own because mm -hmm. they know it'll take them a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So they just give it to us, yeah. and we're the only people that have access to that open job. Mm -hmm. So as a potential job seeker, I recommend meeting with some recruiters, going to staffing agencies, seeing what that's about, and keeping your options open. It's all about casting the widest net possible. Right. You know, I know at the Career Center, we always tell people, um, it's important to look at the staffing agencies mm -hmm. because uh, just for the reasons you just mentioned. And oftentimes we'll hear, well, why would we do that? You know, why wouldn't we go straight to, you know, what company A or company B, but right. company I'll, A or B, they're going directly to you. Absolutely. And sometimes company A or B is so busy. They mm -hmm. might be a small mom and pop place, a mm -hmm. family owned company. Mm -hmm. They might not have a very big HR department. Mm -hmm. They rely on outside help from agencies and you never know what else is out there. Down the street at your local staffing firm, mm -hmm. they could have something for you. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little, a, little, a little bit, excuse me, about companies and uh, getting back to people when they're looking um, um, you know, for, for their next person and how oftentimes they don't necessarily get back to people because they have three or 400 mm -hmm. applicants. Absolutely, and that can be a very discouraging part of the process for mm -hmm. job seekers. Um, you apply, you send out applications, you get maybe an automated email message that was written by a robot, uh -huh. and it just feels very inhuman and like you don't matter to the company. Right. So it's easy to get lost in that train of thought. Um, so what's usually going on is, like you just said, they have a few hundred applicants, uh -huh. they're going through them, and halfway through their search they might say, you know what, we don't need to fill this position anymore something else came up. Because mm -hmm. a lot of businesses, no matter what size, they're always trying to put out fires in one place or another. Mm -hmm. And without even getting back to you, they might have eliminated the position or maybe just had somebody else come along and, and fill it for them. Mm -hmm. So I'd say the biggest thing is to not get discouraged by it because that's what happens more often than not. Mm -hmm. um, and the best way to get around that is to actually reach out to the company and follow up, okay. which can feel awkward at first, but if you show the initiative that you care and that you actually want that position, 
they'll pay attention mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about contract to hire positions. Um, I know oftentimes, again, at the Career Center, we'll hear people say, you know, I've, I've got this opportunity, it's contract to hire. Mm -hmm. Should I take it or should I wait for that permanent position, which may be coming up down the pipeline? Definitely. Definitely. So for in the situation you just gave, that's a great example. Mm -hmm. um, because oftentimes with our clients that are working contract to hire, some of them use it because they're not exactly sure what they want to do. They want to try being an accounting clerk, or they want to try being a customer service rep or a quality assurance manager, but they're not exactly sure. They might uh -huh. be qualified for it, but they don't know if that's actually what they want to do. Uh -huh. So they take these positions because one, they can learn. Two, they get to try the company out. Uh -huh. What if I don't like my manager? What if I don't like my coworkers? Those are things that people want to feel comfortable about when they're right. making decisions. So being able to work contract at the company gives them the opportunity mm -hmm. to sort of try it before they make a full commitment. Mm -hmm. And if they have other aspirations that might be in a totally unrelated field and they need to keep paying the bills, they need to keep feeding their kids, mm -hmm. um, it's a great option to do something for now while you're making plans for the future. Right. And are there benefits sometimes associated with contract positions? Absolutely. Of... And, and it varies by the staffing company. Um, I know with our company, we offer vacation pay, holiday pay, um, we offer ACA, we offer our own insurance as well. ACA as in? As in the Affordable Care Act. Correct, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so it depends on the staffing service, but most companies here in the Chicago area like to take care of their, their contract mm -hmm. employees. All right, so that employer, uh, employee that we talked about earlier that mm -hmm. you know, came to you and said, hey, I'm looking to you know, leave my company, uh, they've landed their next job through you guys. Yes. How do they tell their employer? Absolutely. So that's always a difficult conversation <laughs> because you never know what's <clears throat> going to happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, if you're a good employee, and typically you are if you're showing the initiative that, hey, maybe I've grown out of this position, it's time for me to move on, and my company doesn't recognize it, it's important to be open and honest with them, but you don't owe them every single detail. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, people think that their employers sort of rule them, and you need to get back in the mindset of, this is my career, this is my life, mm -hmm. and I owe it to myself. So you can be open and honest saying, hey, I, I accepted another position. This is what I'm going to be doing. I really appreciate my time here and everything you've done for me. That's really all you have to say. But what will happen a lot where people get tripped up is a counteroffer. Mm. A lot of companies will offer a counter. Well, hey, if you stay, I'll give you an extra five grand and a little bit extra commission on this. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we see that happening, that gives the company to buy some more time and maybe find a replacement before they let that person because go. Because they're thinking that person's not quite so loyal. Absolutely. And that's the scariest part when you're looking for a job and having that conversation with your yeah. current employer. Yeah. Wow. Mm. This was a lot of great information. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Um, sit back and don't go away because when we come back, Steve Eschbach will join me to, to discuss his insights on entrepreneurship and franchising. We'll be right back after these important service announcements. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Good things happen at the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County. Experience more than 25,000 acres where native plants and animals make their home. Discover the scenic beauty of over 60 forest preserves containing forests, prairies, and wetlands. Explore the wonder of changing seasons along 145 miles of trails. Get outside and discover the good things that happen when you visit DuPage Forest Preserves. The Forest Preserve District of DuPage County, where good things happen. Welcome back to Career Center. I'm Kimberly White, Executive Director of the Community Career Center. And joining me at the table is President and Owner of Trans World Business Advisor, Steve Eschbach. Steve, welcome. 
Oh, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And Community Career Center board member. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Delighted so, to be that as well. Good to have you. Good to have you on the team. Thank you. So, um, Steve, let's talk about your background mm -hmm. prior to you becoming the president and owner of Transworld Business Advisors. Absolutely. So, uh, back in 1999, I've had six tr career transitions in executive roles since 1999, and it has nothing to do with poor performance. It had to do with mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So I've got to say that in my investor relations role with a number of publicly traded companies out there, I guess I did a pretty good job because we got premiums to our stock price and we were acquired. But being an executive with an acquired company unfortunately means that I am ready to move on. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the acquired team wins and the acquiring team wins, mm -hmm. the acquired team does not. Mm -hmm. So ever since 1999, I have been networking like crazy because you always need to be the visible, the known candidate. So I think it's very important for you to stay in touch with people and it's helped right. me along the way because all six times I landed, right. including my last, it's my recent your last one. time. Absolutely. So before we delve into this a little bit, let's talk about those six transitions. So you, um, how did you kind of pick yourself up with each one? How, you know, after each transition and getting out there in that job search and keeping that, you know, energy going and... So I've got to be quite honest with you, the first time it was tough mm -hmm. because um, the executive told me that, Steve, your job's been eliminated. And I said, that's fine. What is my new job? No, Steve, you don't understand. Mm. Your job has been eliminated. I get that. What is my new job? Mm -hmm. No, you're being terminated. Please go see the executives in the next room. You got to sign a severance agreement. So it was tough the first time, but I did not stop being a member of professional organizations. And at that time, that's probably all that I did. Mm -hmm. And then as it happened a second and third time, I started getting involved with these career development and job search networking groups, which I thought was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I, I came through all those experiences knowing that networking is critical. So it's kind of funny. If you're a CFO with a company and you need to establish banking relationships before you need the money, mm -hmm. because if you start trying to develop relationships when you After. are out of funds, yeah. it's too late. Yeah. So you've got to be able to be the known candidate and you just have to be able to network and just get to know the people at the various places mm -hmm. that you need to be involved with. Same is true with career development and job search. You just need to be in touch with a lot of people right. because like you never know. You yeah. never know what you're going to uncover. Yeah. When with your subsequent transitions, did you have an inkling those were coming or no? Well, did you start to kind of as I got more experienced in my career, I began to start seeing the tea leaves mm -hmm. or reading the tea leaves. Mm -hmm. So as I got a sense that things might be a little tentative in my current position, I started putting feelers out early. Okay. So you've got to be able to do that and you just need to stay in touch. Like I said, you always need to, to reacquaint yourself with people that you haven't been in touch with and you just never know. And it just happens to yeah. be that I landed. It was a great experience. One of the things that seems to be kind of a um, thing that continues to take place at this table is networking, how important networking is. And I know you mentioned that here just Absolutely. a minute ago. You know uh, the stat, right? Four out of five jobs are acquired through networking. Say it again. People need Four to hear that. Four out of five <laughs> jobs are acquired through networking. Yeah. I can tell you, ever since uh, the early 2000s, all of my positions have been gotten through networking. Mm -hmm. Never an online application. It's all been who I knew who was able to refer me in. Wow. And I, my, my greatest story is how I got to Illinois. It was in December of 2006. I had no job prospects, so I called a good friend of mine who headed up investor relations at a mm -hmm. local Hartford, Connecticut utility. And I just said, can we just go through my database and your database? Let's, let's see if I've got the right names and the mm -hmm. numbers to call. A week later, he got a call from the executive recruiter. And again, this is Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. saying, Jeff, Jeff was his name. He said, would you like to move to Chicago and head up an investor relations position at a new company? He said, no, but I just met with Steve Eschbach. He's got the skill sets you're looking for. Give him a call. Mm -hmm. That was in December of 06. In May of 2007, I moved here. Wow. And that was just, and it was just out of the blue. That's how it, how, how it happened. If I hadn't called Jeff and hadn't talked to him about, you know, 12 or 15 new mm -hmm. contacts for me to reach out to, I'm not so sure I'd be here today. Mm -hmm. But you just need to do that. You all need to do it, even if you feel uncomfortable. I mean, that's you know, kind of the thing I hear you know most around the center is that you know I, I just don't know how I feel about talking to people and how do you just go up and do it? You just gotta 
do yeah, it. It is, and and once you start doing it, it gets it more gets and more, more comfortable. comfortable. So it, it gets to the point now where I'm in a supermarket and I mm -hmm. talk to people about what groceries they're buying. Uh -huh. So if there's <laughs> if there's cereal and a bottle of wine, I'm going to say, is that the right wine with that cereal? Mm -hmm. And it puts a smile on their face. Right. I'm sure they know I'm kidding. Right. But it it, it breaks just, the ice. It breaks, it breaks the, the ice. ice. It yeah. definitely does. And you does. just got to get there. Yeah, you absolutely. Get there. So you know, even when I go to the bank, the bank, the woman behind the teller at TCF Bank in uh, Jewel. She started a conversation with me. So mm -hmm. now all the time I go past that, I just say, hi, Jen, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. It's just you want to stay in touch with these people. Yeah, because you never know when you're going to need them. Yeah. All right, so Transworld Business Advisors, why was that a good fit for you? And then let's talk about how that um, can help folks that are looking to transition and do something different. So sure, let me tell you how that came about. So after I was in transition in 2015, after Wisconsin Energy acquired mm -hmm. Integris Energy Group, what I did is I updated all my online credentials with Monster.com, LinkedIn, Career Builder, quite a few others. And what that happens, what, what happens when you do that is the recruiters begin to call you because you have a fresh resume on mm -hmm. those sites. Mm -hmm. So. I got three different franchise advisors calling me. One of them was a rep from United Franchise Group. And it was so interesting. He came to the meeting. Now, United Franchise Group owned Sinorama, uh, Embroid Me, uh, a few others, mm -hmm. and Trans Transworld Business Advisors. So he brought a brochure for Sinorama, which basically they create signs. Mm -hmm. But it's a brick and mortar establishment. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he brought that brochure is that is their longest running franchise in their group. Hmm. And he just thought, Steve, you probably want to own a business. And then he said, Steve, what have you done in the past? So I said, okay, basically I work with C-level executives, so chief executive officer, mm -hmm. chief financial officer, and I train them to be clear, concise, confident, and convincing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the investment merits of the company that we represent. And basically I coach them on that, how best to sell the story. Mm -hmm. And after he listened to that from me, he said, you know, Sinorama is not for you because basically you'd have to be in a shop. You'd have to put things through machines. Uh -huh. I don't see you doing that. Uh -huh. He says, I see you being able to talk to business owners and help them to be able to sell their businesses if they need to do that. Uh -huh. So every time I work with a potential seller, I say, what are the three qualities that separates you from the rest of the pack? Uh -huh. And that's how we list the business. And I'm, I'm still working with the same type of people. It's the you know, the top person of a business here in Naperville, mm -hmm. and being able to help them put the best story forward in terms of them trying to sell oh. their business. Mm -hmm. Were you considering a franchise? In Absolutely your not. No. Today is what February. We're approaching yeah. March, yeah. April of April. 2017. Mm -hmm. A year ago, I had given no thought to that at all. It never crossed my mind. But the one thing I've learned since then is that you have to be able to listen and respond and not tell. Mm. And that's what that rep at United Franchise Group did. He, what he did, he just said, what have you done in the past? What do you want to do in the future? And let's see what the better fit is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way you've got to work with people. You have to be respectful of their, their goals, their ambitions, and try to find something that fits. And that's how it all came to be. Right. So if someone's in a job transition, um, franchising, should be a, something that they may consider, that Absolutely. they might think about. Absolutely. So one of the good things about um, owning Transworld Business Advisors is that I've lived in Naperville for eight years. Mm -hmm. Well, it's 10 years now, but eight years when I worked at Integris, I spent three hours a day commuting back and forth to Chicago, which is where the business was, and I never spent any time here in Naperville. Mm -hmm. Now with this business that's based in Naperville, Can't I'm doing do more of networking here in my local community, and I've met so many people, and I think it's terrific. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. And one of the things I've learned, too, is that you can never stop learning. Right. I've learned so much from so many people, the Community Career Center, right. for one, uh, other business owners. Uh, I'm more involved with the Chamber of Commerce, which mm -hmm. I never was involved with before, mm -hmm. and it just—I just absolutely love what I'm doing. Right. It, so, it, what are some so what are some things that a person who's kind of thinking about perhaps franchise might be an option for me? Um, what are some things they should, you know, some steps they should take before they decide to to do that? What are some things they should look at? So, they have to do an assessment of themselves. They have mm -hmm. to make sure that they have the drive to be able to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I now have to meet, there, there are 15,000 businesses in greater Naperville. So now I have to get out and meet 15,000 business owners. Wow. Now, chances are. Is that are, many in Naperville? That's well, that, that's my territory. Yeah. That's my territory. Yeah, yeah. That's how they divvy up the franchise right, right. territories. 
Uh, and it's not only Naperville, it's some of Wheaton, some mm -hmm. of uh, Lyle, some of Aurora, but mm -hmm. um, I just need to be able to introduce myself to people mm -hmm. and let them know who it is I am mm -hmm. and what it is I do. Mm -hmm. Most people know me as an investor relations professional. Mm -hmm. Basically, I work for corporate America and I told the story of the companies I represented. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't do that anymore. Right. So I have to be able to tell people who it is I am and what it is I do and how I can help them. Mm -hmm. And now it's getting more involved with the people of Naperville mm -hmm. and getting to know them. Right. See, they do a lot of training with uh, Trans World Business Advisors. They got a great support team. The franchise has been around for 35 years. Okay. So we've got, it's got a strong backing. They know how to succeed and they will work with you time and time again to make sure that you can succeed. Mm -hmm. And the, the most amazing thing is that I can continue to network and now instead of career development and job search, which I still do, right. now it's more business development. So everyone I meet is okay. So, so let's say there's a business owner who's mm -hmm. currently in, in place, not mm -hmm. wanting to sell. If they need someone to fill a spot, I can help them you with that. You can help that, because so you're, you're doing some networking and you, you're connecting with people and you can yeah. help. So there's a woman I know at Great Western Flooring, and mm -hmm. you know who owns Great mm -hmm. Western Flooring. Mm -hmm. She needed a sales and marketing executive. I said, give me the job spec. I'm mm -hmm. going to put it on the Community Career Center board. And lo and behold, she got eight viable, viable. Eight solid candidates. Leads. Yeah. And I, I said, she hired one. Yeah. I said, let me try to help you out. Now, granted, I didn't help her sell her business, but right. I helped her, you know, satisfy a need that was immediate right, right. and down the road you know i hope something like that will come back to yeah. to go back so to people me. should look at you know the longevity longevity of a company and um you know what um how long they've been in business and how well they're doing and what are some other things they should look you really for? have to take an assessment on what it is you want to do so for me I continue to want to interact with business owners. Now, granted, it's not multi-billion dollar companies mm -hmm. on a New York stock exchange. Now it's smaller uh, business owners in Naperville. And I have the experience of being able to represent the companies I've worked for, and now I'm going to help them if they want to sell to do that. So you basically have to find what it is your passion is. Mm -hmm. And once you determine that, then you can determine what the business is. So the funny thing about this business is that a lot of times I will meet with uh, prospective buyers of businesses. Mm -hmm. And they'll come in and say, Steve, I want to buy an established business. Well, you, you converse with them for 45 minutes. Lo and behold, you find out that they want something else. Believe Believe it or not, that happened two weeks ago. Someone wanted to buy an existing business. Uh -huh. Turned out he is now considering a trans world business advisor franchise in business? Chicagoland. But you, th that only comes about if you're able to listen and respond and yeah. not tell. Listen and respond and Listen, not tell. I think you talked about that, too. I did, yeah. I did. And, and it also shows that you care about people. Right. And I think that's important. Yeah. That's the first thing they tell you to do. They want you to develop the relationship first. Yeah. And then try to tell Listen them what it is you can do. respond. Very good. Okay. Well, we are out of town. Oh, Time. my goodness. That was a quick 12 minutes. It was good. So Pleasure. nice to see you. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Take care. Steve, thank you so much. I also want to thank Chuck Priscelli for joining me on this month's edition of Career Center. And to our television audience, if you are unemployed, underemployed, or seeking a career change, visit the Community Career Center at 1815 West Dill Road, Suite 900 in Naperville, or search us on the web at www.communitycareercenter.org to learn more about the resources available to you as you search for your next success. Thanks so much for watching.